playoffs. <laughs> You're raising the bar? <laughs> you gotta get taller. It's playoffs. Right, right. Step up. All right, good to have everybody here. And uh, obviously, it's a Wednesday. Guys are in good spirits, and uh, we've had a good start, good work day so far. And uh, obviously, still a lot of work to do. Um, it does, you know, without getting into the strategy too much about it. Uh, obviously, there's there's more value in the second possession than there has been in the past. Uh, they can't win on an immediate field goal. Uh, they can't win it on, on an immediate touchdown either way. So, uh, but on that second drive, if the team goes down and kicks a field goal, they basically have four downs to move the ball down the field. It's not like they're only going to give them three downs, and they would assume they would have punted if we weren't in overtime. So, you know, that second drive has a real good chance to move down the field, uh, I would say, odds-wise, percentages-wise, more than it normally would. So you got to keep that in mind, and you might see some teams defer. You might see some teams decide to kick. I think that's a possibility, depending on the wind and all that stuff. How have Ed and Michael Orr responded to a couple more days to, to heal up from what happened on Sunday? Uh, they seemed good. They were out here, and uh, seemed like they're moving around okay. Still optimistic for both of them for Sunday, yeah, you said? Always optimistic. I'm a very <laughs> optimistic person. Hey, Coach, with all the, uh, the false start penalties you guys have had, you know it's going to be extra noisy this right. week. Uh, distressing that those happen a lot at home and now on the road with the extra noise. How are you addressing that? Well, I mean, they're not helpful anywhere, Jerry, you know, and uh, we just we just can't afford that. It's, it's tough to overcome that. We can overcome it, you know, you can always overcome it, uh, but we don't want to have to overcome it, so it's a, it's a big emphasis for us. You surprised your, uh, your brother's name being dropped more than yours this week? You're going to the playoffs. I heard, uh, I heard a couple guys, I think Ron Jaworski called him John a couple times on the, on the broadcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Felt very proud about that. <laughs> a long way. It felt great to win the Orange Bowl then? Hey, was, yeah, hey, well, yeah, I tried, I tried. I was, I was coaching the Orange Bowl and didn't even know it. Don't uh, take the 49ers job. <laughs> John, what's it mean to have a guy like Ray Lewis with his playoff experience uh, on this team, uh, his Super Bowl experience? Well, Ray Lewis, uh, his experience, and really all, we have great leadership on this team. You know, I think that's one thing that we're very well blessed with. You know, we've got great veteran leadership. We've got young guys, I think, that really, you know, are, uh, they want to learn from the veterans. They, they're, they're all ears. They take it all in. Uh, they jump on those guys' backs. Guys who've been there before understand what it's like to play in those kind of environments. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it definitely helps. Do you think with John, his 15 years experience, uh, he gets a sense of urgency here, knowing that there's not much on the other side? Sure, Dave. I, you know, I think, yeah, definitely. The guys like Ray and, and Derek and, and uh, Corey and the guys who've been around without leaving anybody out, there's a bunch of those guys. Uh, there's, there's a, there should always be a sense of urgency. Look at the Dan Marino situation. I mean, you just never know how many playoffs you're even going to make in the course of your career and have a shot at it. So, uh, But those guys really feel The young guys figure they're going to be back there every year, you know. But uh, I think the young guys are feeding off the veteran guys' urgency a little bit and understanding how valuable these, you know, these opportunities really are. You know, life is short, and careers are even shorter. So here we are. John, do you think uh, Joe Flacco is underappreciated in this town? Uh, I don't know. Is he? You know, I'm not sure. I mean, it's, well, I'm asking you. I don't know. I don't, I don't gauge it. You know, I think uh, he's a heck of a player, and, and uh, I'm sure glad he's our quarterback. It's been 32 games since you've seen the Chiefs uh, put the projector on this week. Obviously, a different team this year than what they were last year. What have you seen from them? Well, uh, I think they're just getting better all the time, Nestor. They, uh, I think you see the same type of personality that they were trying to build when we played them in the first game, you know, at the beginning of the year last year, and they've just gotten better. They've added players. They're very physical. Uh, tough, hard-nosed defense. Good young secondary, led by Eric Berry, who's going to be one of the star defensive backs in this league for a long time. Uh, you know, linebackers. Two draft picks playing, first round picks playing defensive end. A veteran offensive line, especially the inside guys. Two backs that can take it to the house at any time. A receiver that's got 15 touchdowns. There's a quarterback that you know, obviously is, is a veteran guy now. So it's a really good team. Speaking of veterans.